Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Ash, AOB, you already know. So today, um, I just wanted to show you guys basically everything we got on our last episode there. Um, so let's get into it. So first and foremost, um, let's start off with what we got from Mike. Uh, the subscriber we went to go see at Grimsby. So we did a trade, um, as you guys saw in the video. So I gave him a motor, a brand new Castle censored motor. Um, so we did a trade and we, I got the 4S5S capable motor from him, brushless, sorry, brushless uncensored. So that's good. Um, we're probably gonna put this in the basher and then upgrade the ESC in the basher so we can just really go quick. And then um, we also got the GPS uh, system from him. It's a, what? Kus, kus poo? Kus poo? I have no idea what that is, Kus poo. Um, but yeah, that's basically it there. Um, I have no idea what this is as yet. I'm gonna have to look it up, do some research and figure out how to use it. Um, if you guys are interested in getting one or if you have one and you wanna know how to use it, um, hit me up in the comments and I will do a video if you guys are interested. If not, then I probably won't. But yeah, I'm gonna go figure this out and see how to actually get this to record miles per hour, kilometers an hour, stuff like that. And <clears throat> it's, a, it's Bluetooth, so it's supposed to be able to connect to the phone as well and stuff like that. So we're gonna give that a try um, in the future and see how that goes once I figure out how to use this. But yeah, there's that. I think you just hold this down and, yeah. Okay, yeah, so. But yeah, basically you strap this into your car, your RC car, buggy, basher, or whatever. Um, obviously not a crawler, unless you really wanna see how slow you're going. Um, but yeah, you'd slap that in there and then you rip it, pull it back and then it'll see, you'll see what you recorded. Um, he also threw this in for me, which is pretty cool. So it's, it's a temperature checker thingamajigger. So as you guys can see there, it's picking up um, it's 24 degrees Celsius on my car over there. So that's pretty cool. Um, so this will be good for speed runs, fashion, stuff like that. So you can keep track of the heat on your the motor. So big thank you, Mike. That was a freebie. Thank you very much. Awesome. Um, moving on. So we went to Amazing RC and we got <coughs> up power racing. 90 millimeter shocks. These are for the SCX10 or TRX4. Um, these are gonna be going on the Endura. So we're gonna put in our little um, shock sauce in there, get these all set up, and then we're gonna go ahead and throw those onto the Endura. But yeah, that's basically all we got that day. Um, other than that, there is another thing that we are gonna be trying to accomplish. All this stuff we're not doing today, obviously. This we're gonna be doing today, uh, filling up the oil, um, putting our shock sauce in here and getting these mounted up on the Endura because the shocks on those are shot completely. Yeah, so now let me get into the next thing. Um, just give me a second, I'm gonna pull it out. Let me put these off to the side up here. Right, so as you guys can see here, we got three servos on the table. Um, probably wondering why. <laughs> so, what we're gonna do is we're gonna attempt to make a servo winch. Um, I was looking at some videos on YouTube, stuff like that, and um, doing a little research and seeing on how this is done. So basically you just ba disassemble this and um, pull out the pins or something like that. Um, I am gonna take these apart. I will show you guys um, my process basically on trying to do this because this will be my first time doing it. I got these two test dummies that I'm gonna try out and see if I can get them to work and do what they're supposed to do. And then I have this one, which will be the one that I actually wanna use on the vehicle. This is gonna be for the red cat ascent. I'm trying to make a winch servo for it. I am trying to put this on here. So we got a winch spool that will go on the servo. This is really cheap. I think it was like 10, 10 or 11 bucks on Amazon. 25 tooth, uh, let me show you guys there. 25 tooth servo winch roller, aluminum. So it comes with the roller, as you guys can see there. The string, 
and well not striping, this is wire. Yeah, the wire. And then it comes with the um, the hook and all that good stuff there to basically assemble a winch line. So we're gonna fight with the winch first, try and get that to work. And then we're gonna see if we can get this hooked up on there and then mount it up into the red cat ascent. And hopefully everything works out well. Now this one, this is only a 20 kilogram servo. So nothing too powerful and it is waterproof. So I don't have to worry about that. Hopefully I don't cause any unwaterproofing when I open this, but it should be good. I'll just keep an eye on seals and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I think we should be all right there, hopefully. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, I'm gonna be using these two as test dummies first, pulling both of them apart because I'm um, pretty sure not every servo is the same. This servo is a Deluxe Hi-Tech HS422. Not really too sure on the specs on this. Pretty sure it's probably covered in underneath there, but whatever. And then this one is a Ace RC S1903. These are all um, RTR servos, I believe. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this one is as well. I know for sure this is RTR. This is not. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and just get into it. See what All right, guys, so I just wanted to bring you guys up in close here. So we got it connected into channel four. Got the servo in pieces. Got some gears here, some gears there, gears everywhere. But I, I know where everything is. It's just, <laughs> I had to do this so I could show you guys. Um, so basically once you, I'll show another one here. This also goes with it. Right, this is what we modified to work. Take that out of this one. So this is how it comes when you do open them up. You got your gears in there. This one normally would sit on top of here, like so. And it would have its um, little pieces and stuff in there. And this would go in here like that. Connect everything together. That's how it looks when you take the cover off four screws and this just pops right off the front. So no big deal. But normally you should be able to get like a plastic piece out of here, but this company machined the whole thing in to one, which is actually good, don't get me wrong, but not for what we're trying to do. So that just, that sucked. So threw that out. And then basically what we did was took this one because as you guys can see here, if it'll not, catch so much light right there you go so you guys can see there um that one's just hollow inside so and the reason for that is you don't want it to spin on this so this basically indicates left or right um to select which way the motor is going to spin and the gear normally does cog on that to lock it left or lock it right stuff like that so Basically, what you want to do is, with it's powered on, as you guys can see, power, got the remote here, sorry, powered on. So, as you slightly touch this, it's gonna either go right, or left. And then you gotta get it to where it's... So hard to do it on the camera, but Basically, you get it to where it was where it was before, where it wasn't moving at all, until I barely touched it, and then it just went K-wire. And then once you get it to that middle spot, oh, almost had it. But either way, once I get it to that middle spot, you just gotta glue this, super glue this in place so it does not move at all. You wanna do that while the power is still running so you can actually see and make sure it's in neutral. So just uh, give me a second, let me get it back to neutral so I can show you. All right, so you guys can see there, we are back to neutral. Power is still on, controller is still on. I'm gonna try and just rest this here. So now when I activate it on the controller, channel four, forward, backward. And you can see by just doing that, it's shifted the, um, the, the transmont, the, whatever, the switch. So now it's not back in neutral anymore. So that's why you've got to glue it up 
make sure it's it's cured and properly glued and then you test it and then you put it all back together but you want to glue it while it's on so that way you can see any little slight adjustments it'll have it running left or right instead of being in neutral so i'm going to go ahead and glue this all up and then um, i'll show you guys once we're done glued up um how it looks stuff like that and then i'll fit everything back together so give me a second there guys all right guys so she's all glued up there you guys can see focus right so glued it up pretty good so um i did have it powered on not the entire time but majority of the time until like it was pretty much set and then after that um i did test it just backwards forwards whatever stuff like that with the motor and then just to make sure it didn't switch out of neutral and it didn't so I just powered everything off and let it completely sit and cure, which is why it looks a little white now. So we're good there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and reassemble all of this. And before I actually, before I put it back into um, its case, I'll get back to you guys so you guys can see. So give me one all second. Right, guys, so as you can see there, got it all fit up. This was hard to do a video with um, the gears and stuff. So I'm just gonna insert some um, pictures of how that looked in there when I put it all back together and stuff. So there you go. All right, so now you guys saw all of that. It does work. Let me show you guys. Let's go ahead and plug her up. Power to it. Transmitter on. Car on. There we go. So you guys can see it's still in neutral. Got no movement there, so that's good. And then one direction, other direction. So yeah, everything's working well. Problem is, um, when I went to install this into the Red Cat Ascent, there's no space for the spool. <laughs> um, it keeps hitting uh, either either way you put it. If you put it this way, it gets tied up on the pan hard link. I believe that is. Nope, sorry, it gets tied up on the steering link for off the servo. And then that sits like literally in here. It's it's weird. And then when you put it this way, it hits the diff or the axle or whatever you want to call it. So yeah, <laughs> that's a no go for this. But the winch still works, so that's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah, turn the light on. But... And it's got it's got some power to her, and it sits perfectly in neutral. I love that. So what we're probably going to use this for is our trailer, because we do have a trailer. So we're probably going to use it in the trailer, get it set up in there um, some way. Actually, let me, get, let me show you guys the trailer real quick. Right, so here's the trailer. So I was thinking, um, this is still a work in progress, of course, as you guys could probably see that. Um, don't mind how dirty it is. I had a truck just resting on it. I have not used this trailer as yet But yeah, she's She works does the trick, you know um, Got these wooden pieces in here for stability. I also have a couple uh, These little ramps here So I'm gonna mock something up for that basically It'll be like that Probably on some hinges, something like that. So that way it'll kind of like swing up or that or um, some kind of like doll thing. So like drill a couple holes in here, put a couple studs on the bottom of this and then you kind of just like stick it in there kind of thing. And then they'll store to the front up here. Have like a, you know, build something to kind of hold these with some straps or whatever or something like that. But either way, more work to do on this, of course. Got a couple pieces to replace in here that snapped off. Um, but yeah, 
like I was saying. So this is probably gonna sit, you know, something like that in here somewhere. Somewhere, somehow. Probably mock something up, like to the back here. So it can sit like somewhere here and pull the vehicle straight up on there. So that's basically what we're looking at for this. And then run the wire into the vehicle so that way I can connect it to the, the receiver in the vehicle and then it will be controlled off of the um, transmitter. So that would be a cool feature, you know, run out their line, connect it to the vehicle that's out here wherever broken down and you just pull it straight up on here if you need to. We're gonna remove this one because obviously that's, that's gonna be fake. So <laughs> this will be what's going on there. And then, you know, reinforce all of this, probably put like a thicker piece of uh, wood behind here just to make sure it can hold and not buckle when I do that. But that's that for this servo. So that's what we're gonna do with this. So that's pretty cool. I did wanna get a servo, uh, sorry, a winch for this, like a real one not this fake looking um, scale piece. So yeah, that works. And yeah, it didn't really cost me anything either. <laughs> but either way, so let me go put all this stuff back away and I'll bring back the ascent and we'll talk about that. All right, now that we got the red cat back on the table. So what we're gonna end up doing is um, ordering the internal spool internal spool winch from Reefs. So that should be pretty good. Saw them on Amazon. Um, I also saw it on one of their videos on YouTube. So I was like, yeah, why not? They also have like uh, the mini spool. So it sits like, I guess like that much instead of like this whole long thing. But honestly, I don't know if that's even gonna work. So, but I know for sure the inner spool will work because they had it running on the ascent that they have and they had no issues. So I'm just gonna get that and call it a day whenever we decide to do that route. But that will be coming. Um, but that's basically it for this. So we're gonna put this aside. This will be for the trailer. So we still have the line, the hook, all that stuff to assemble. This is the, the gear that came off um, from inside here. If you guys saw up earlier in the video and that's that so let's go ahead and wrap that up other than that that's basically it for the red cat ascent this is going to be on trail sunday at the ravines so we're going to be hitting the ravines for a third time part three that's coming so we got the hyrax tires on here as you guys saw we got the hyrax foams in here um everything is as it's supposed to be we got the weights up in the front we have the axial shocks in here uh these are axial capra shocks they're in here um we got our shock sauce in here fusion se um everything else is stock so oh and we got the 20 percent overdrive which is also stock because it comes with it in the box um yeah running these little shorty packs three s's got three of these but that's basically it so yeah the next time you guys see this red cat ascent it will be sunday at the ravines and we're going to try out this new setup which i believe is going to perform incredibly so yeah can't wait i'll see you guys in that video um next thing we're going to be doing is the shocks for the endura that we picked up from amazing rc but that will be in another video so thank you guys for watching Please like and subscribe if you guys haven't done it already. And I will catch you in the next one. Peace.